Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, a guest on MSNBC recently called for Elon Musk to be prosecuted for the things he says on X. Here is venture capitalist Roger McNamee making that case. So the critical element in thinking about Elon Musk is like any American, he has a right to his own opinion and he has a right to express his opinion. However, that right is not unlimited and he is under some special limitations that wouldn't apply to normal people because his companies, specifically Starlink and SpaceX, are government contractors. And as such, he has obligations to the government that would for any normal person and should for him require him to moderate his speech in the interest of national security. So what you have is somebody who runs really strategic defense and aerospace projects for the federal government who's actively undermining the government which is paying him. And somewhere in there is a legal case that needs to be prosecuted. So that's one of the most Good tortured Lord. arguments I've ever heard. You know, talk about making just like totally making stuff up. Yes, if he leaked like classified documents as part of some government military contract that SpaceX got, well then yes, he could be prosecuted for violating some national security provision. But what he was being asked about there, what that guest was being asked about is of course the disinformation on Twitter, on X, on social media, of which has nothing to do with whether the, the companies he's involved in are doing contracting work for the government. That does not suddenly give the, give the, make it so the government can prosecute you for allowing too much speech on your platform or engaging in those same First Amendment traditions on the platform you own. Um, wow. It is absolutely deranged, yeah. deranged. And, and this isn't, made, you know, this is happening in other countries right now. Well, exactly. They are going after Elon Musk. Exactly. Brazil banned X from operating in that country because they demanded that Elon Musk censor members of parliament who were critical of the last election, uh, demanded he censor information from Brazilian citizens that was critical of the last election, or even just critical of the current president. And when Elon Musk refused Fused, they had a judge uh, demand that they send a legal at attache down there to discuss this further. Elon Musk again said, no, I'm not doing that. And they just blocked the platform. Uh, and unfortunately, it seems like that should be far away from the United States. But we have people like this clown saying, Elon Musk has free speech. However, however, but however. Could have stopped there. Could have stopped there before the however. And then you also have, of course, these multiple court cases that have been lobbied against the Biden administration for directly coordinating with social media companies to censor Americans. Unfortunately, censorship is coming closer and closer to home every single day. Yes, it's the situation in America is certainly not ideal. It's not as strongly in defense of free speech as we would like it to be. However, I am then always reminded when we do see the situation in whether it be Brazil or China or Europe or Iran or Russia or, you know, any from every side of the authoritarian spectrum, from left wing authoritarianism in China to the kind of progressive European Union technocratic model to Islamic extremism, there are threats to free speech where social media companies are being attacked. Your, your right to dissent against your government to say things they think are wrong or blasphemous, that is under siege everywhere in the country, including in America, but our rights are more vigorous, vigorously protected because we have that First Amendment and, and they don't. And Brazil is a really scary example right now. I was glad to see some mainstream uh, organizations, including the Washington Post, put out an editorial saying this goes so far and this is shocking and scary. And I, I, I was glad to see mainstream institutions shocked at how, at how broad this is. I mean, this is eliminating a major free speech communication platform, an informational platform, a way people get their news and understand what's going on in their country and debate it and discuss it. That is now blocked for millions of people because of the actions of one judge who said, uh, who wanted accounts taken down, who ordered Elon Musk to take down, not to contextualize or not to re 
formulate some algorithm, but take down this account because I don't like this. He refused to do it, and so now the site no longer operates there. Unfortunately, a lot of those same mainstream media outlets who have rightfully condemned what happened out of that Brazilian judge's decision have had little to say about Murthy v. Missouri, which yeah. was the case from epidemiologists in the United States who uh, were on the receiving end of this Biden administration-led targeting of their post. They were accused of spreading COVID-related uh, misinformation, which it turned out they weren't. I mean, one of the epidemiologists was Dr. Jay Bhattacharya, who helped author the Great Barrington Declaration, which was like the most, you know, obvious uh, conclusion yes. to reach, which was that the lockdown should have been targeted for the most vulnerable as opposed to this sweeping one size fits all policy. And the data didn't bear out the idea that the lockdowns were actually going to save lives, which we now know thanks to multiple studies, including one from Johns Hopkins, that that was correct. Um, and now you have RFK with a similar case against the Biden administration. A judge just determined that he actually has standing to sue, yeah. where the Supreme Court threw out the Murthy case um, for lack of standing, which I didn't really understand their reasoning there. But I'm sure smarter legal minds than me could uh, explain to me why I'm wrong. Um, but And then mainstream media actually celebrated when this anonymous account, Ricky Vaughn, was thrown in jail because he made a joke meme about Hillary voters yeah. going to the polls on the wrong day. That was day. a really uh, egregious case that we've written about uh, considerably at reason. Uh, it's insane. Yeah, another one of the uh, COVID contrarians take, uh, taken down, suppressed under that, thinking of uh, Martin Koldorf. Uh, who we've interviewed on uh, on Rising, and uh, he pointed out that he's like the only person he thinks who is censored for for being both so-called anti-vaccine and also pro-vaccine because he was on a, like a CDC recommendation council where he dissented from the CDC's decision to pause one of the vaccine rollouts because he said, well, the, that would harm the people who need it, the elderly people, et cetera. There's, there's no reason to pause it. So he actually, you know, he said like, his statement, I think, that got he got him in trouble in social media was, you know, I would not, I would not say no one should get a vaccine, and I should not say everyone should get a vaccine. It's a case by case basis, and that's like the crazy thinking that led him to be suppressed <laughs> on social that. media. Yeah, so uh, so it'll be, it, it's going to be interesting to see. The one thing I will say about Elon is that he's simultaneously like, you know, the owner of the platform and setting the rules, and says he wants it to be a free speech platform. He is also, we have to be totally fair and clear about it. He's a Right, he's a conservative media figure who is openly rooting and in support of Trump, which is fine. That's his right to do that. Um, but he's like, you know, he's a, he's both the owner of the platform and it's like most important user, right? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, well, you you can't be both the referee and the other team to some degree. I mean, you can because it's his site; he can do whatever he wants. But um, okay, I, I would I would like him to maybe step back and have slightly more institutional neutrality than he does. Yeah, I guess it's still better to me than when you had the entire... Uh, well, right, the entire site used to be hostile yeah, to the well, right. And, and like it's... the entire uh, meeting of employees at Twitter yeah. and Facebook after the 2016 election were like in tears because Hillary lost. It's like, yeah, could be worse. <laughs> could be worse. All right, we'll have more free media coming up next.